How does the teaching of a pre-tribulation rapture destroy the doctrines of Roman Catholicism? Well, let's go over a couple of these. First, you have Roman Catholic teaching, and I know what I'm talking about, okay? The newest catechism, the Baltimore Catechism, and I have a bunch more up in here. I have the Council of Trent, the Second Vatican Council, and all that other stuff too. I've studied it, so don't tell me I know what I'm, don't what I'm talking about. All right, I'm not going to show you the quotes from here, but if you want to see it, maybe I'll do it in a future video. But the fact of the matter is, Roman Catholicism teaches perpetual salvation. You are never saved. You are being saved. You have to die in a state of grace without committing mortal sins. If you're, as long as you're committing venial sins, they can be forgiven and everything else. You see, you have to continually go and you have the Eucharist and, and take Mass and everything. Um, well, if that's the case of you being saved, how can the Lord make that decision to say, okay, come up hither and those that are saved go up? You know, does he take people that are above 50% saved? Or those that are, you know, 49% and under stay here on the earth and the 50 and up percent, you know, of those that are being saved? How could the Lord make a decision like that? You see? That's a problem for you. So that's why the Roman Catholic Church and those that are Catholics must stand against the pre-tribulation rapture. Because the pre-tribulation rapture is saved people, born-again people, that are redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, according to the Scriptures, and they're called up. They go up in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. They are in Christ. If you are being saved, then you are not in Christ. Because if you're in, you aren't going to be out, then back in, then out, then in, and out, and everything else. And it's ironic, too, because the teaching of this Eucharist thing, the transubstantiation, where the, the bread and the wine is transformed into the body of Christ, it only goes in for you for a little bit, and then it comes out again. So they're not in Christ. Christ is in them. And then it gets flushed down the toilet. That's a problem. Number two, what about purgatory? Again, not an obscure teaching. This is official doctrine of the Roman Catholic Church. Their official doctrine says that you cannot go in as a faithful Catholic. And there are even quotes I've seen of the popes can't go directly into heaven. They have to go through the fires of purgatory. They call it God's hospital for the sick here in this uh, Baltimore Catechism. Those who are sick with sin, they have to be purged a little bit, burned with fire. Well, how do you do that when you get to the rapture? Absent from the body, present with the Lord. Boom, you go right up. The dead in Christ shall rise first, and we which are alive remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Skips right over purgatory. It's a problem. Number three, what about extreme unction? All right, the last rites. You have somebody either dying or dead on their in the hospital bed or wherever else they die, and the priest comes and he puts the holy oil on their forehead and makes the sign of the cross and all this and reads them some kind of special thing and whatever else. Well, how are you going to do that if it's like that and they're caught up? Again, another problem for you if you're a Roman Catholic. What about the prayers for the dead, also known as death masses? You can have these masses said for your dead relatives that are in purgatory to lessen their suffering. What are you going to do with that? The dead in Christ rise first. Boom, up they go. There's no more dead people down there. Hmm, interesting. Again, you go back to the problem of purgatory. If the dead in Christ and the living in Christ go boom and they're up with the Lord, what do you do about purgatory? Purgatory gets skipped over. What do you do about all those death masses? going to be quite a loss of revenue for the Catholic Church, if you know what I mean. How about the need for suffering? The need for suffering that so many Catholics like to talk about. Co-redeemer, and I'll, and I'll join my sufferings with those of Christ to help humanity. Mm -hmm. And yet it's ironic because all those who hold to a post-trib rapture and talk are very vehement for the post-trib rapture, uh, they all talk about the need for suffering. Oh, the church hasn't known suffering yet, but it will. We're going to suffer and many are going to fall away and many won't make it and we're going to have to endure to the end and all this stuff. Yeah, you see what they are? They're Catholic, the Roman Catholic. That's why a lot of times you'll hear these people saying, oh, we're just, I'm returning to the historic position of the church. Hmm. What is that historic position? What they're referring to is the church fathers, way back when, 
who quotes the church fathers? Oh, that would be Roman Catholicism. And you look at the teachings of a lot of these church fathers, they were heretical. Baptismal regeneration and, and teaching a lot of other heretical doctrines and things like that. The Catholics will quote them. So when you get a Bible-believing Christian, quote-unquote, saying, I'm returning to the historic position of the church, they're saying, I'm showing my true Catholic collars. That's what they're doing. I don't need to suffer anymore. I've suffered enough. I'm looking forward to the Lord Jesus Christ taking us out of here. If you're a Christian, if you're a Bible-believing Christian, I don't care if you're living in America or not, you've suffered. You've had family turn against you. You've had friends turn against you. You've had depression problems. You've had all kinds of things. Problems with your job, losing jobs and, and financial problems, health problems. You've had, you've had problems. You've suffered. Okay? We don't need any more suffering to prove how holy we are. Jesus suffered on the cross to pay for our sins. There's no more need for the church to have to go through this final time of purification, which I, ironically is what the catechism teaches. I've shown that in other studies. The church needs to pass through a final time of purification. Isn't that interesting? How about uh, number six, another way that the pre-tribulation rapture, the teaching that we get caught out before the time of Jacob's trouble, the proper biblical term, is complete removal of the church. The dead in Christ rise first. We which are alive and remain, caught up together to meet them in the clouds, and will be with the Lord. 1 Corinthians 15, 51 through 58. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 through 18. Uh, what do you do with that? If the Catholic Church truly was teaching the rapture, like a lot of these you know, knucklehead post-tribbers, they'll try to say it was first taught by a Jesuit. Uh, that's a total lie. Complete total lie. Why would the Catholic Church ever want to come out with a teaching like the pre-trib rapture? It destroys their whole system. The rapture happens. All of a sudden, the head of Christianity here on earth, the Pope, he's gone. All of the cardinals, all the archbishops, the bishops, the priests, the, the nuns, the monks, the all of them, poof, they're all gone. Um, I thought that they were building a kingdom here on the earth. Why would the Lord yank them out at a pre-trib rapture? Who's going to take over the Catholic Church? who would come in and fill their position. That's why the Catholic Church doesn't teach a pre-trib rapture, never has, never will. Could be because it destroys their entire system, if it was true for them. And it won't be because Catholics are lost. Number seven, it puts living Christians on Mary's level. You say, what are you talking about? Well, if there's a pre-trib rapture, and there will be, when the pre-trib rapture hits, those who are living, saved living Christians, are going to get caught up. Now, according to official Catholic doctrine, the only one that that's ever happened to was Mary. The assumption of Mary. Why? Because they believe she was immaculately, immaculately conceived. They just happened to come up with this doctrine, though, in the late 1800s about the Immaculate Conception and the assumption of Mary in the 1940s or 50s, I think, somewhere in there. Hmm. So, according to Catholicism, the only one that was ever called up, the only person in the church age, I don't even think they'd call her a Christian, because she's the mother of God, mm -hmm. yeah, mother of a pagan, you know, whatever, uh, Semiramis, you know, the queen of heaven in the Old Testament that the Bible condemns. She was not the mother of God, she was the mother of Jesus, okay, the big difference there. God the Father and Jesus Christ are one and the same, but they are distinct and separate, okay, as well. Get a hold of that one. But the whole point is, Mary is the only one that they teach was bodily assumed up to heaven, and all of a sudden you get a bunch of Christians just like me, regular people. You know, I'm not the mother of God or the father of God or anything special like that. I'm just an old saved sinner is all I am, washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. And all of a sudden, up I go, my wife with me, you know, all you saved brothers and sisters out there, boom, we go up. Wait a second, that was Mary. That was Mary's uh, specific honor that she got taken up to heaven. See? Because she was sinless. Now, according to the record, I am sinless. Why? Because Jesus Christ, His righteousness is imputed to me. His perfect sinless life is imputed to me. And my sins were put on Him when He died on the cross. You see? You see how the pre-trib rapture destroys Roman Catholic doctrine? All of their primary doctrines are destroyed if they would teach a pre-tribulation rapture. That's why all the servants of Roman Catholicism have been coming out so vehemently against the pre-trib rapture. They hate it. 
They try to say, oh, it's just a new teaching founded in 1830 by John Nelson Darby. Absolute total lie. You can prove that even some of the original older church fathers there were talking about being taken out, the church being taken out before this time period, this tribulation time period. The quotes are there. You know, the Council of Ephesus, Ephesus in 430 AD. I looked it up on a Catholic web, excuse me, Catholic website. It openly says that they were condemning the premillennial type of structure and things, and also by implication the pre-trib rapture. All right, you can look it up. I have a whole video on it. The Catholic website talking about the pre-trib rapture, condemning the pre-trib rapture, and they cite the Council of Ephesus, 430 AD. All right, so th this teaching that, oh, it was just a recent thing and whatever else, and no Christians ever believed it. Well, no Catholics ever believed it. Because if a Catholic believes the pre-trib rapture, it totally destroys and dismantles their whole doctrinal structure of their church. <laughs> Be real careful when you hear somebody attacking the pre-trib rapture. Chances are you're dealing with a Catholic.